He uh, has been to Temple for quite some time and is now up at uh, St. Luke's Hospital. Uh, the, just starting out um, with the old guy, I'm actually like the warm-up band uh, for Dr. Haydell, which who will follow me shortly. Um, as you know, today I've been asked to discuss system improvements your hospital can make now to improve hip fracture care. Uh, the objectives today will be uh, to learn uh, ways to reduce time to the OR for hip fracture patients, learn system changes that will decrease time at bed rest and minimize other comorbidities. Uh, we'd like the audience to become familiar with ways to decrease costs for care of hip fractures and also to understand ways to improve bone health in the fragility fracture population. Um, my personal experience with uh, programmatic change is uh, to use these three devices to help improve uh, geriatric fracture care. Um, this includes the Geriatric Fracture Program, the AOA Own the Bone Program, and CareSense, a software management uh, program. I have no disclosures today. The Geriatric Fracture Program uh, provides a programmatic approach to fragility fractures um, that helps uh, reduce um, the length of stay and improve care by a uh, systematic approach. It was developed by Dr. Stephen Cates at the University of Rochester. Um, in 2006, Depew Synthes uh, took this project on and started disseminating it to hospitals across the country. Um, and there's literature to support the validity of this program and, and the way it improves uh, patient care. Um, this program works by providing clinical pathways and order sets so care is uniform. It provides education for patients and clinicians. It provides patient resources that you uh, don't have ordinarily, and it also gives you access to subject material and experts in the area. Uh, the benefits include shorter length of stay by standardizing assessment and organization and, and uh, surgical intervention. Uh, there's consistent uh, discharge to uh, rehab facilities um, there's reduction of inpatient complications and improved coordination of care. Quality improvements include elimination of variations in care, improved staff communication, outcomes tracked for review and further improvement, and enhanced financial performance. And it helps sustain the culture of accountability, and we're all trying to become members of that uh, culture. Well, here's the problem. We have a significant number of uh, geriatric fractures that we're seeing each day, and they're growing and growing in number. Osteoporosis is a common element. Uh, this is a decrease in bone density, which uh, decreases strength of the bone. Fragility fractures are fractures that occur from low energy, usually a fall from standing. The incidence of these fractures uh, increase significantly once we hit around age 65. I personally used to think 65 was old. We have a tsunami of patients coming our way, um, the so-called baby boomers, those born between 46 and 64. They're just entering the 65 age category, and over the next five to 20 years, uh, we're gonna see a large bulge of patients that are gonna require care, and we have to be ready to, to provide it. The Own the Bone program was developed by the American Orthopedic Association, and this helps identify fragility fractures, the cause of this increased number of patients. Uh, the patients are admitted to a national registry, and then from that registry, they're referred to rheumatologists and uh, um, endocrinologists to help provide a diagnosis and treatment plan, and further to communicate with their PCPs to keep the care going. It never ceases to amaze me. Every day we get fragility fractures, patients in their 70s and 60s that have had no uh, evaluation or treatment for their bone density issues. CareSense is a sophisticated software program that collects data from hospital uh, EHR and um, office EHR, 
by way of a unique interface, and it provides a dashboard of, of information that is instantly updated and allows you to understand uh, where you're going with your care. How many people here play golf? Let me see hands. How many play golf? Okay. How many keep score? Yeah, most people keep score. I've been doing this 33 years. I don't keep score at this game, and we have to start doing that. Um, unfortunately, there's a 24% mortality rate with uh, hip fractures. 30% of these people um, have a permanent disability. 40% of them can't ambulate independently, and um, a whopping 80% of them have some activity of daily living uh, that can be performed independently, taken away from them. Uh, in the U.S., the average length of stay for hip fractures is about six days. Um, the uh, mortality rate uh, is just over 2%, and about 87% of them go to a rehab center. Um, the common element here is osteoporosis for all these patients, but most of them have m uh, multiple comorbidities, and this is a list of, ver of very common ones. The uh, geriatric fra fracture program provides um, advantages in the way of order sets and care plans uh, that provide uniform, uh, thoughtful care. Um, there's care coordination that doesn't take place otherwise, uh, no matter what we think. And data collection is very important to understand um, what we're doing and how we're implementing Im improvement. Um, this is keeping score while we play golf. Um, physician champions, nursing champions, administrative champions, all very necessary. If people don't work together, the program can't thrive and survive. Um, you have to understand your pre-program performance. The uh, support of IT is very important, and you have to have an interdisciplinary cooperation to make this work. This is what um, patient flow looks like from ER to OR to uh, the exit door. Um, this is the maze we call uh, health care. We have to do better than that. One of the things that really helps is standardized admitting service criteria. At St. Luke's now, um, much to the chagrin of our residents, all hip fractures come to the orthopedic service. The only time they're excluded is when they're polytrauma and they go uh, to the uh, trauma service. Um, and um, if the medicine consultant, which sees each patient, if they think the patient is so sick they should be on their service, they'll take them. Um, our patients are seen in the operating room by the hospital, in the emergency room by the hospitalist. That's a very key element to making this program successful. An echocardiogram was an obstruction to the OR in our institution prior to this program. Um, this is now owned by the hospitalists. Working with the hospitalists and anesthesia docs, um, we've almost eliminated the need for cardiology consults for these patients. Um, there are few indications for mandatory echoes which slow this process down. This is what a pr the process looks like, uh, or a flow chart looks like, uh, prior to implementation. On average, it takes people about four hours from the time they hit the ED door to being admitted. It takes um, a total of six hours to actually get to the floor. On average, 36 hours to get to surgery, and the average length of stay is about 6.1 days. And this, this average has been maintained over the, the last uh, 10 years. So this is pre-programmed. Well, here's the goal. Uh, you want to get people through the uh, ER maze in uh, less than two hours. And um, inside this program, this really works. Patient hits the door, the orthopedic resident runs down, the diagnosis is clear, hospitalists come down, get the patient prepared, and we move forward. You want to you have them uh, to the floor within four hours, and our goal is to get them in the operating room within 12, uh, but it's, it's admirable if you can get them in the operating room within 18 to 24 hours. And the, the length of stay that's the target in this program is four days, which is very attainable. Stakeholders are key to success. Orthopedic surgeons, ER physicians, hospitalists, 
anesthesia, have to work very hard along with the physical therapist, the OTs, the OR staff, and discharge planning. We try to put these people in places in the operating room um, where we don't make room naturally. Um, if someone comes in before midnight the night before, we try to make them an emergency case at 6.30 in the morning, or if we have a spot at 11, we'll take them there at 11. Um, we work hard every day to insert these uh, patients into a, a busy schedule. Um, at our institution in the first six months, you can see over in the right there, um, much to my surprise, we went from an average of 6.1 days length of stay to 4.1 in just six months. It, it was uh, really an eye-opener. This is what the, um, the dashboard looks like from CareSense regarding the geriatric fracture program. Um, you can see there's uh, data about um, the length of stay, um, complications, DVT, pneumonia, et cetera. You can keep your, your finger on the pulse of what's going on with these patients, address any downturn in result right away by, by having this at your fingertips. So this is an extremely important part of the program. Uh, we had some delay in getting CareSense inserted into our institution because we had the addition of an electronic health record in the office and one in the hospital, and that really puts almost everything on hold until they're implemented. So in one year, we started this in April 2013. So we collected data from the year prior to that. Going to April 2014, we compared uh, the two sets of data. Uh, number of patients went up a little bit. Uh, the readmits went down a bit. Our mortality rate wasn't bad. It was about 1.5%, less than the national average to begin with. Um, the case mix index, or severity of illness, whatever you want to call it, was about the same in the two groups. Our pneumonia rate went down, uh, the delirium flag went, went down, ulcers were reduced, DVT PE went down, very important for, for hospital reimbursement for CMS right now. And more importantly, length of stay uh, was sustained. It, it was at 4.2 days at the end of this 12-month period. So in conclusion, system improvements can ele elevate geriatric fracture patient care to a higher level. Pathways in education are key components. The stakeholders make this thing run, and you need everybody to cooperate every day. And you have to meet regularly. We meet once a quarter to make sure we're on target. Timely access to dashboard information is key to maintaining a successful implementation. I'd like to thank the Pew Synthes for allowing me to use some of their stock slides in this talk today, and thank you for your attention.